In the 49ers' last four games of the regular season and playoffs, Debo Samuel had 39 touches, was targeted 47 times, and gained 569 all-purpose yards. Every week, Shanahan made a conscious effort to get Samuel involved in the game plan. While Debo is clearly the third guy behind Kittle and Emmanuel Sanders, he slowly carved out a significant role in the offense. The 49ers love to use his short area quickness and open field ability whenever they can. He takes snaps in the backfield at running back a couple times a game, he'll get some jet sweeps, he's a frequent target for quick screens, and Shanahan does everything he can to scheme him room to maneuver. Debo is really good on digs and curls which make up about 50% of his routes run. These routes maximize his ability to snap and accelerate and allow him to use his speed to transition in and out of routes. When Debo gets a clean release and is able to get into his route, he consistently does a good job of eating up cushion and stepping on the DB's toes. He's particularly good at this on dig routes and curls. While he sometimes drifts into his cuts, when he does it right, he instantly creates significant separation. Here he eats up ground and gets up on the defender's toes before bursting flat across the field and instantly creating 2-3 to three yards of separation. Here he is again getting up on the defender's toes to threaten deep and make them turn their hips. This is the most consistent part of his route running. Once he's into his route, he does a really good job of attacking the leverage of defenders with his speed and his quickness. It might sound simple, but he's starting to do the little things right on a consistent basis. Here's an example of a curl at the bottom of the screen where Debo does a great job of selling his vertical route and making the corner turn and run before snapping off for the curl. It's super important to threaten deep on every route to force the defense to react and protect. This creates space underneath to work and gives windows for the quarterback to throw to. While Debo certainly has the skill set to make it in the NFL, he still has quite a few things to work on as he enters his second year in the league. The biggest thing that jumps out on tape is his struggles with physical corners and jams to the line of scrimmage. He struggles with hand use to prevent jams or contact, is slow out of his stance, and is inconsistent with his release plans. You can see Debo at the top of the screen versus the Saints as the corner walks down to press him. The thing of most concern here is that it looks like Debo doesn't have a thought out plan to beat the press. He gives some foot fire but doesn't use his hands to prevent the defender from jamming and rerouting him. The corner has leverage and prevents Samuel from getting to an inside release. There's zero threat from Samuel for any other route other than a slant in this situation. There's no shoulder dip, quick outside stem to self fade, or anything to force the corner to turn his hips and give Debo room to work. Compare that now to a slant that Debo ran in the Super Bowl, and you can see the technique that he uses to push quickly outside, turn the defender's hips, and then cut underneath to create separation. This is a recurring theme for Debo. He's again slow with his hands here, doesn't use lean technique to create separation once he plans for the route, and if the defensive back has better feet, he may not get off the line of scrimmage at all. Basic release techniques and plans emphasize preventing the defender from getting in on your chest. To do this, receivers often pull and dip their off shoulder so that there's less area to contact for the defender on their jam, and it allows them to get leverage inside. Receivers also use their hands to prevent the defender from contacting them, or use a variety of stem and footwork releases that threaten the defender and force them to react and get out of position like we saw on his route in the Super Bowl. The problem is Debo isn't doing these things consistently. He lets the defender get in on his chest, and it's not always bad to initiate contact with the defensive back, but you have to have a plan of attack, and here Debo doesn't. He wants to eventually release to a deep out, but releases inside him because the defender gets his hands on him, he can't then break underneath him. DeAndre Hopkins is a master at releasing inside on deep outs. Compare Debo's route to DeAndre Hopkins running it against the Jaguars a couple years ago. Hopkins gets a hard inside release to prevent a jam by Ramsey, threatens deep, and once Ramsey turns his hips to run, Hopkins is physical and swims underneath Ramsey to beat him on the deep out. There's a clear plan of attack for Hopkins with exceptional execution. The opposite is true for Samuel, and it all starts with him being unable to get a clean release. Once he gets caught up with the defensive back, the route is essentially over and he doesn't have a chance to create separation. There were definitely ups and downs to Debo's game, but he was only a rookie, so that's to be expected. What's exciting to me, and should be exciting for 49ers fans though, is combining his positive traits with what Shanahan has already started cooking up for him. He typically schemes up at least one play every game to try and guarantee Debo a score. The most common play they run for Debo in these situations are quick pop screens that let him filter through the defense. Unfortunately for both him and the 49ers, they've done a pretty poor job blocking them and Debo has dropped two of them. But what's important here is that the 49ers are making a concerted effort to get him the ball in scoring position. The scheme is fine, but each time one crucial block is missed or Debo takes his eyes off the ball before securing it. Here are some other quick screen variations and RPOs that the 49ers use to target Samuel within scoring position. 
the Saints read it well and the 49ers miss blocks on both counts, but it's another indicator that they believe Samuel is important to get the ball to in these condensed areas of the field. If the execution was better, Samuel would have easily had another five touchdowns on the year. Some of the coolest stuff Shanahan does with Debo though is in the run game and really indicates that he wants Samuel to get touches. Here, Debo gets the ball on an end around. San Francisco ran the exact same play a number of times through the year, including games in the playoffs, the Super Bowl, and a few weeks prior against the Saints. Debo with the ball in space is a scary thing for defenses, and that threat can also help open up base run plays on Shanahan's offense. Every time they ran it, it ate up a ton of yards and was a significant play in the game. With the movement in the backfield and all the false reads, many times linebackers, safeties, and defenders are out of position to make a tackle or even contact Debo before he's already 10 plus yards down the field. The Niners love using a ton of misdirection. They pull their left guard along with faking a crunch block from their fullback as if they're running power to give the linebackers a false read. Typically, linebackers read guards and pulling linemen because they indicate where the play will be run. The right tackle number 69 hinges and seals off any backside pursuit so that the end can't blow up the mesh point or track Samuel down. The center down blocks and then climbs to go get a secondary player, which gets an extra blocker downfield. Garoppolo fakes the power action to the running back before pitching it to Debo on the end around. 49ers do a ton of this power crunch action with Kyle Juszczyk, where he comes across the formation as an additional blocker. So Shanahan gives the same initial look before wheeling Juszczyk around and lead blocking out in front of Debo to the left. It's the perfect counter to an over-aggressive defense when a team is taking their base power run away. Also, big shout out to Kyle Juszczyk at the end for the two for one block that allows Debo to score. We'll finish up with one more play that works off of the 49ers run game and has gotten the 49ers and Debo a ton of yards over the season. Again, the 49ers love to run that crunch action with their fullbacks, tight ends, and even wide receivers that are aligned in tight splits close to the linemen. It's simple and effective for slowing down backside pursuit because it makes the end and the outside linebacker stop and think. The crunch can kick them out, it can slide underneath and block up field, or they can release on play action. In this case, the running play action off outside zone and the crunch with Debo in a tight split. It's a simple flood concept with one deep receiver, one intermediate receiver, and Debo in the flat. The linebackers flow to the run action, the man on Debo has to filter over the defense to get to the flat, and Debo catches the ball with a ton of space to work with. That's the whole goal of what Shanahan's trying to do. He's trying to get Debo the ball in space and let him go to work and make defenders miss. All in all, Debo certainly looks to be an important piece of the 49ers offense going forward. Shanahan is making a concerted effort to get him involved in the passing game, run game, and in the red zone. As long as Kittle is on the team, he'll have a tough time eating into his targets and touches, but he certainly looks likely to ascend to the top receiver role this year with Sanders gone. While inconsistent with his release and hands, he clearly has the tools to carve out a niche for himself on the offense. If he can polish those things in combination with a growing understanding of route running and consistent play, look out for that 49ers offense because nobody can stop all their weapons at once. If you like the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. It helps a lot as the channel is growing. Comment what player or team you'd like me to analyze next as well. Make sure to go check out weeklyspiral.com for a written form of this video and see everything I'm working on. You can find our Patreon and social handles in the description of the video as well. So until next time, I'm Casey Sully, and I'll see you on the next Film Breakdown.